carbon link is unique in that we have a special net carbon producer program that engages producers all the way from first technical feasibility and financial feasibility assessment through to project registration, through to a comprehensive mapping program, through to uh, a land management strategy, and then baseline sampling and subsequent sampling, uh, offset report writing that we submit to the government to demonstrate how much carbon you've sequestered over five years, right through to the uh, overseeing of the issuance of your carbon credits into your carbon credit account, and then we support you in marketing your carbon credits for sale, or you could potentially hold your carbon credits to retire against your own emissions profile to be carbon neutral. CarbonLink's net scanning system is the first of its kind in the world. It is a visible infrared scanning unit based in our Gladstone laboratory that scans our soil cores. Another differentiator that we have is that we drill down to as, as deep as 1.5 metres, typically 1.2 metres, and we extract a core of soil carbon about 3.5 centimetres wide and about 1.2 metres uh, in length, and those cores are shipped to our Gladstone office to scan. Traditionally, uh, people have measured soil carbon down to only, say, 30 centimetres. That portion of the soil profile, the carbon is cycling. It's coming, it's going, it's coming, it's going. But below 30 centimetres, the carbon it gets stored and stays there. And we make sure that no carbon credit is left behind and that we measure uh, the majority of the soil carbon that's going to be in your soil profile as cost effectively as possible. That's right. Uh, our scanning instrument uh, measures uh, the average of the soil carbon content every five centimetres. Traditionally, uh, agronomists had measured the top 10 centimetres average and then the 10 centimetres to 30 centimetre average and then maybe down to 60 centimetre averages. Whereas we do increments every five centimetres to make sure that we've captured all of the soil carbon that's present in that soil profile accurately at different depths. So we can provide a chart demonstrating the baseline soil carbon content and then the increase in soil carbon over five years at different depths. The Carbon Good logo is awarded to producers who have demonstrated that they are on the journey to not only being carbon neutral but to being carbon positive. Many producers possibly are already carbon neutral or carbon positive but they haven't been measured and uh, registered suffice to do so. If you get a Carbon Good logo certification that demonstrates that you're involved, actively involved in carbon farming towards or beyond carbon neutrality. Carbon Good logo could uh, be advertised on your uh, gate going into your property, on your vehicles, and it could be basically a conversation starter for people who see the logo and say, what's Carbon Good? And you can say, well, I'm on a journey towards regenerative agriculture and improving my country through uh, regenerative agricultural principles. I'm taking carbon dioxide gas out of the atmosphere and I'm putting it in the soil and I'm avoiding emissions by improving the health of my livestock. Net Spatial is a great component of Carbon Link and uh, comprises a big team of geospatial experts that undertake the mapping that's required to do a soil carbon project. Uh, a soil carbon project uh, must forecast and estimate soil carbon sequestration rates based on variation in soil types across the landscape of the property. In order to characterise a property well, we have to purchase satellite imagery, we have to classify that satellite imagery into uh, forest or eligible area and in in ineligible area and we have to we incorporate what they call gamma reflectance characteristics into it. Gamma reflectance looks at variation in soil particle size and can be is very closely correlated to the underlying soil type and the potential for that area to sequester carbon. The process is quite involved to actually find satellite imagery that doesn't have any clouds in it, that is recent, and then it's classified, and then we uh, cut the property up into carbon estimation areas and within that we have strata within any one carbon estimation area and there are a certain amount of sample points for soil sampling that are required per strata and all of that information 
is provided to the producer in, in maps and then the producer can tell us where uh, some of those sample points might run into some trouble like a rock or a tree or a, uh, a creek and we'll try to exclude those as much as possible but it, there's nothing like the producer's uh, knowledge of their property to guide us through the process of the baseline sampling based on the random sample points, based on the strata and the carbon estimation areas and the image classification. Very involved process but we've got world class team involved and we produce some of the best maps in the ERF. CarbonLink's Net Impact Project Plan is a very comprehensive document that enables a producer to make a go-no-go -go decision towards registering a soil carbon project or a vegetation project for that matter. And uh, a Net Impact Project Plan includes a technical and financial feasibility assessment. We do a deep dive into your soils. Uh, we, do, we look at the, the climate, the topography. We determine the eligible area through a mapping process and we provide maps to the producer to demonstrate where the variation in soil carbon will be, a forecast yield and a forecast uh, return on investment. So the producer can look at it and say, I know how much it's gonna cost, I know all of the steps involved in developing a carbon project and here's my likely yield under a variety of different carbon price scenarios. The best way to organize getting a net impact project plan through CarbonLink is to call Carbon Link or go onto the website and register your expression of interest and then we can guide you through the process of what's involved in a project plan. Uh, we provide you with a project planning agreement that details all of the components of the project plan that you'll be receiving and then we interview the producers about their practice change plans for their property including changes in intensification of grazing or rejuvenation of pastures etc and then we write up this 35 to 45 page document that includes all the steps and we debrief uh, the project plan with the producer and then the producer's in a position to make an informed decision of going forward or pausing and waiting for a little while before they might want to continue.